Hey guys, it's Sigus Mergali. So uh, today we're gonna we're gonna film uh, a free instructional uh, where I'm going to cover uh, six different scenarios, and it's gonna be a quick overview. Uh, I mean, about 20 minutes each, I would say, where I'm going to give you guys details and how I approach those scenarios, how I maintain those positions, how I build control, how I find submissions, and it's gonna be very helpful for you guys. And definitely in the future, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna come back to the studio and then record some instructionals uh, about specific points, specific techniques. But uh, for uh, now, I'm just uh, giving you guys some uh, support. And yeah, it's gonna be amazing instruction. I hope you guys enjoy it. What's up, guys? Welcome to my uh, free GI instructional mm -hmm. video. Uh, where uh, I decided to make it because that is my way to pay you guys back for all the support you guys always uh, gave to me even when uh, I recorded instructionals having zero English so <laughs> that that is a good way uh, act, uh, out because uh, right now I can like teach Jiu Jitsu properly after having almost a year uh, uh, building my teaching skills, also living here in Austin, so my English is uh, easier to understand. And I mean, I'm having so much love for all my fans since I moved and I'm doing this transition, gi to no gi, and also changing the way I'm approaching my career that I couldn't make anything difference, uh, different than uh, give you guys this uh, instructional. So uh, we have a plan that we're gonna cover different uh, scenarios. It's not gonna be uh, a full instructional uh, only about one topic. So I chose six situations where I can not only teach one movement, but I can gi give a quick overview about uh, 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 the scenario that we are facing. So it's gonna be uh, color and pants control so and I chose this one because in my opinion is the uh, easiest guard you could get open guard actually you could get in a real uh, fight uh, X guard situation because I love to play under the hips and I think this is a very important uh, skill that you guys have to develop so I gave uh, 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 I give, I'm gonna give uh, an idea about how I play under the hips and find sweeps and make my opponent unstable so from unstable scenario build my uh, progress uh, Tori on the passing how I approach my opponent's body and how I build the pressure on top even when uh, I don't have any solid grip to hang myself on top because you guys know Tori the passing Tori the, Tori the passings are some type of uh, 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 quick passing so you have to make your approach and get an angle so, and also I want to talk about angle when I get there, like on the side of my opponent's body. Uh, back take, so I would love to give more ideas about back take, but I think it's going to be around 20 minutes each situation, so I cannot give it much. But what I want to talk about specifically is the difference about control over hook side against under hook side and how I set up my grips. So I normally don't lose my grips when I set up on my strangle. And I have few tips that I do uh, very well. And even if you don't have like strong grips, I'm pretty sure you can add to your game. So it's gonna be how to control the back, how to set up your strangle, and different types of strangle kind of sequence that uh, uh, I use uh, are my favorite ones uh, when I have a real fight like uh, I'm in a tournament or like super fights and I have to finish my opponent uh, What else? Uh, what I said color pants expert ah, mount position very important point So I'm developing my mount position since I moved to Austin So John is like pushing this type of uh, pin control and I'm uh, having a lot of success so I chose mount because I'm also having success not only applying that technique on my training sessions and in tournaments, but also uh, teaching my students. So everybody from my group is becoming super solid, controlling people on bottom mount, on top mount, sorry. Uh, and I gave a few ideas about how to build a posture, 
how beauty your body position, how you use uh, 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 your body, how set up your upper body. I'm getting tired and tired. <laughs> I'll set up your, uh, my upper body on top. Like I, I'm going to give two setups for upper body, like hands and collar control, and two setups for lower body, hips against hips, and ankles, ankles crossed with knees wide. So those uh, uh, four setups you can combine, depending on uh, which one you do prefer, and it's going to be very helpful. And also, I'm going to teach uh, triangle from mount. For two reasons. One, that was a technique I showed on my last match against Pedro. It was a beautiful triangle. And second reason, because I had this last week, the whole week teaching mount, and 50% of my students, at least 50% got a shoot triangles from mount because it's a very solid technique. And I know you guys can quickly add on your game and then uh, have success. And uh, the last one, it's gonna be top half. Top half. I can check here if I forget. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sure it's top half. <laughs> yeah, it's top half. Top half guard. Yeah. And uh, I just add. I just forgot because I just add this type of top uh, top half guard because I taught a private Friday today Sunday, and on this private I taught exactly the same setup that I'm going to show in the instructional and this is why I chose top half guard this uh, method uh, I had success on the private so I felt that was great for the students so I think I can kind of give you guys as well the same the same ideas about uh, flatting the guy back fighting against shields and upper body frames and moving up to underhooks because once you guys understand how to uh, beat shields and frames it's more about time because we're flooding the guy uh, uh, on the mat, your opponent. So move uh, forward by leaning your body on the diagonal lines, using your head position, get your underhooks. You can pretty much do whatever you want with anybody if you get the, those setups on uh, uh, half guard situations. And yeah, it's just gonna be pretty much that. And I would love to teach more than 20 minutes in each scenario. But it's it's gonna be impossible because it should be one whole instructional just about that. And as it's a free instructional, I chose those uh, six scenarios that can be helpful for you guys. Uh, even you guys only having uh, only have only have only having twenty minutes from those scenarios because I'm giving chips that I know. Is helping are helping my students so they are changing their games from those tips and I know you guys can also change even having those only 20 minutes I guess the instruction is gonna be around two hours and yeah it's a good way to pay you guys back and I'm excited for the future and also uh, 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 receive the feedback from you guys on my Instagram DM or posts or even on bjjfanatics.com all right thank you so much Hey guys, uh, this technique is going to be color and pants control and the reason I chose this one uh, uh, to talk about uh, uh, open guard is because in my opinion this is the easiest one you can get in a real fight or uh, inside a gym, training partners, whatever. So everybody always expose one leg when they have uh, the top position and they have to build something to pass your guard, you're always going to have access uh, for one, the Lahiva control can be uh, reverse the Lahiva or outside the Lahiva. I do prefer outside. So you have access to pants control or ankle control. And the collar uh, uh, is something that you're always going to get if you use your body uh, in a good way, right? So this is why I chose this one because it can be very helpful for you guys to start to understand the idea I have behind my guard, which is control and retention is more important than sweeps and submissions. So every time I'm playing guard, my main goal before I start to look for the openings that my opponent can expose to me is uh, how I build my control, how safe I am playing guard, any type of guard. It can be collar pants, it can be 
this way even color control it can be lasso so i'm always putting more effort on my guard to build my control and rotation instead of anything else so it gives me pace uh, it's giving a good pace to work and also uh, uh, I don't need to rush to do anything because as I'm controlling my opponent I can also move forward for something else if I decide uh, and I find the best opportunity to do that. So having those things in mind, what do we have? This line is good tight? Yeah. So uh, having this in mind, so everybody can see that situation happens a lot so your your training partner uh, no matter what posture he assumes on top you're always going to have access to an outside the lahiva right it's not a big deal it's an easy uh, a setup to get so you guys can have access to pants control and ankle i particularly uh, prefer uh, uh grab the pants because i feel i have more control about my opponent's legs so uh, what I do with my hip to play the lahiva, instead of play the lahiva with my body 45 degree like that, I have to first adjust my butt over my opponent's foot and then I can use my leg with a good traction here to use the lahiva. My knee is coming towards my chest and then I can generate some good uh, pressure here to use my de la lahiva in a strong way, right? So this is uh, 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 my first frame and way to control uh, Fernando's body. Fernando is this guy. Uh, so my second leg, just turn a little bit. My second leg, right? So there are a lot of places that I uh, that I can uh, uh, post my foot and use my leg around. So it can be with a hook behind the knee, can be a step on the knee, can be a step on the hip, can be a step on the inside hip. I can also manage my foot on my opponent's upper body depending on the way he comes with his uh, 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 pressure. But the most uh, 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 soft, not soft, but like easier spot to place this hook and have more effectiveness is when I, I hook my opponent's butt like here and I expose my shin and knee against his hip. And this shin inside my opponent's hip, the near side, uh, 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 work as a frame and, sh and shield. So if Fernando tries to down his level and come to over my body, it's gonna be very difficult because of this knee. You guys can notice that if I, ch I turn, I change my shield from the inside hip to the fore knee, when he starts to drop his body weight, there is no shield. What is my control right now should be my hand on the collar. So this is why when I'm building my control here, I always have my Della Hiva, pants control or ankle, and I have my uh, shin doing the job of my opponent's inside the hip. When he comes down to apply pressure, my hand on the collar, of course, is gonna be placed here, but just my leg and my, uh, uh, just my leg is enough to uh, uh, block his attempts to pass my guard. So this is the first setup I have when I'm playing collar and pants control. So push it up again. So collar and pants control, I had to grab the collar. How I grab the collar? So before I fight to grab the collar and expose my body in different ways, I have to make my setup. So I'm looking for control and rotation, right? So I have to be in a safe spot. So if I have this type of lock on my opponent's leg, he can't do much. He can cut the knee, he can't find a good angle to pass my guard because uh, I have the shield inside the hip and the outside of the hip. It's a good uh, a combination to have. So I can wait him to come down. If I have access to his sleeve without unlock my body, and when I say unlock my body, is build some wrong body position to catch his sleeve, I can go for it. I can go for the inside or outside if I have access. But if I feel it's too far away from my grip, I cannot sit up because I lose my strength. So I, I have to let him come to do something because if he's straight up like that, so he's exposing his legs for tripods, he's exposing his legs to get inside an ashigarami. And this is why it's so important you guys have some good first uh, frames and shields uh, to see what's going on and then move from that. So if Fernando wants to pass my guard, he has to come and grab my body in different ways. And that's gonna be probably the main approach. He's gonna come with his hand on my rib and he's gonna try and manage this leg. So it's pretty easy for me right now to start to post uh, 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 grab his collar and then post my hand on his uh, uh, collarbone, collarbone, right? Collarbone right here. So I have to expose this part of my hand to frame him. So if I have my knuckles on his neck, 
I can lose my frame because I can bend my wrist by having this grip. So if I bend my wrist uh, like here, like turning the palm of my hand towards my body, I can al always lose this, uh, 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 this frame because he can force my hand against my chest. When I have that type of uh, 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 hand configuration exposed to the palm of my hand, when Fernando tries to drop his body weight on my arm, it's super easy to maintain heel weight because my arm, I have some full extension here and I'm exposing the one part of my body that he can't break. So he cannot break my hand right now. So if I switch my hand like here and he drop his body weight, I have to spend energy and probably I'm gonna lose this bottle about my frame. So this is why when we grab uh, uh, the collar like uh, right here in this situation, collar and pants control, we have to expose the hand like here. I just grab it and turn my hand. When he tries to drop his body weight, it's easy, like it's super easy. So you guys can see that we are starting to play guard and the main goal since the first second was to be able to control. I didn't try of balancing him, I didn't try, you can relax a little bit. I didn't try of balancing him, I didn't try get sweeps or submission, I was just looking for control. So I build one control, two controls, three controls, and the fourth one, I have a hand on the collar. So it's four controls for Fernando breaks right now before he starts uh, to pass my guard or try any uh, uh, like a situation that can be uh, helpful for him. So imagine that if he postures up and break my hand on the collar, he can't pass my guard immediately. Why? Because I have the shield on the hip. So if he tries to cut his leg, it's going to be very difficult. I have three connections, pants, outside the lahiva, and inside shield. So he has to calm down and manage my legs again. So I grab it, the collar, and I can frame again. So I'm always in a safe position, and I'm always rebuilding my frames. If I feel I lose even one of those four frames, I always have to rebuild that. So once I feel I have, I have the control, Fernando can't pass my guard, he's trying some knee cut, so it's easy for me to have my knee cut control. Let's say that I lose my De La Riva and he starts knee cut to this direction. I have pants control, it's easy for me to maintain both. Or even if I lose my pants control because he's applying a lot of pressure, this hand, as I'm exposing the palm of my hand on the collar, when he tries to drop his upper body, it's gonna be very difficult. So I have enough time to post my second hand on the shield, hip escape a little bit and bring my shield on the hip again. So we have a situation that I'm framing him. I have like reverse the hip where I can extend my leg. I have my shield on his hip and I have both hands on the upper body. When he keeps moving to adjust, his posture is gonna be fat, it's gonna be very difficult. I can move back from the same place and this hand on the collar is always saving me. Let's say that Fernando is walking to the other side. So he's walking and finding an angle beating my De La Riva. So what is saving me here? What is saving me here is that because my the palm of my hand is exposed on Fernando's uh, collarbone, when he drops his body weight on my arm, he's fighting against my elbow and forearm, right? So the difference about, let's a little bit, the difference about I have this type of hand configuration and this type of hand configuration is that this one, I have to push him away. I have to do a bench press. This one, I can force him to uh, 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 hang his body on my bone. So I can pretty much expose my elbow to him and when he tries to drop his body weight, it's gonna be very difficult for him to break this frame. So look at where is my shield. My shield is still inside his inside hip and then I can readjust my body, maybe off balancing him, come back for the same position and then we have collar and pants again and we are ready to work. So frames and shields, and builder control is your is your goal. Every second you're playing guard. Sweeps and submissions, uh, of course, that is what you're looking for. But you have to keep your mind that your goal is keep the control. If you spend the whole fight controlling your opponent, and that is what I always uh, encourage my students. So if you guys are playing guard for six minutes, around six minutes, and you guys are playing guard for six minutes, controlling your training partner, it's beautiful. Keep doing, you're doing a great job. Because the more you can show your training partner, the more you can find openings for certain submissions. And this, this, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the progression we're gonna see from this situation right now is how I force Fernando to post his hands on the mat to uh, uh, build uh, uh, to find openings, right? 
So I have my hand exposed here, I have the heel and I have my uh, uh, shield inside the hip. I have tough balance in him right now and how I do this? If I pull him down with this hand of the collar, if I try like bring my elbow towards my body to off balance him, I'm just helping him to uh, uh, make his legs strong, right? Because when I pull him down, he, do, he does some kind of back square to find his base. So I'm never gonna off balance him. So every time we are off balancing people from guard, we have to use the elbows in a way that we have, we flare the elbows, we turn the hands, and we bring the person to fight against, uh, we bring the person to a scenario that Fernando, uh, the person has to use the toes to, uh, 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 to find the balance. So let's say Fernando is here is square, right? So I have my hand in the collar. So if I try of balancing him, Bring, bring my elbow down, like here, he always gonna find some back square, uh, a posture, and then it's gonna be hard for off balancing him. But every time I have a situation where I can flare my elbow and pull him over my shoulders, it's very hard for him to find off balance. Even if he has some more athletic base, down a little bit more your base, yeah, like here. So pulling down, he can still base me out. So when I flare my elbow and I pull him forward, it's very difficult for him, even if I have no support on his legs. So in this situation, I have shield on the hip, outside the la hiva. I'm blocking his leg movement, at least this one, the leg that I'm controlling the la hiva. So imagine I have this scenario where I'm controlling one side of his body, I have access to his collar, and I have balancing him, flaring my elbow and forcing him to find the base using the toes. He never gonna find a good way to keep himself on top, and I'm always gonna get to forcing him to post hands on the mat. So I just fought Pan Ams like two months ago and you guys probably, there's one match that you guys can see that I did it pretty well, like forcing the guy to uh, uh, post hands on the mat to find uh, uh, sweeps uh, and trance was my match against Dimitri Souza. So Kazushi is maybe the most important thing you guys can learn from guard and, and that one's a very good example. So we are here. So what I'm gonna do, flare my elbow and use my knees against my chest to bring his hips over my hip and then I'm gonna send him over my shoulder because every time we are off balance people in any type of scenario in the gi we're gonna off balance people against the shoulder line so I find a direction to out there I flare my elbow and I pull him forcing him to pose hands on the mat so when pose hands on the mat if he is still with his uh, right hand inside my rib it's not a big deal he has no base I just keep pushing him out there and then I get this situation. So right now, to get under his hips, because that is my goal against high level guys, so I have to switch my hook from the butt to inside his hip, because I don't have my shield anymore uh, by using my shin across his hip, I have to step on, on his outside hip like that to keep his hip in the air. So if another tries to move back, it's very difficult. I have my body in a 45 degree posture on the mat, so I can easily start to like pummeling, extend my leg, and then reach that position where the Ashigarami is available, and also X guard. So once we get those two scenarios, we are ready to go and then uh, uh, finish the sweep and then work in an easy way against high level opponents. Because once you get under the hips, it's money in the bank, so they're always gonna find your best sweeps from there. So again, the off balance tips. So to off balance people, remember if you have access collar and sleeve controls, flare elbows, right? So first thing, flare elbows to force your opponent to work uh, on the toes, not on the whole foot. Second tip, always bring your knees towards your chest. Why? Because his hip is not aligned to mine. So I have to bring his hip to over my hip like here. Oh. So if he's over my hip, I can make him flow in the air in an easy way. So things combine, I flare my elbow and I send him over my shoulder, always, that is a line. Diagonal to both directions, it's not over the head, but diagonal, Boom. I force him to pose hands on the mat, I switch my hook from the butt to the inside of the hip, and right now I have this 45 degree situation. I can like palm my inside, and we have whatever we want. So just extend my leg and easily I can get access to so Ashigarami when he postures up, whatever. So I can switch for X guard. If he's still posturing up, I just come and I can find these easy tripod sweeps. And then, sorry. 
and uh, get success instead of fighting hard to get sweeps from front attacks getting under the hips is the easy, easiest thing on the planet and starting from this control collar and pants because you have those frames and shields in place you're always gonna find a way to balance your opponent and not expose your guard because that is the main point when you see people in tournaments or in the gym scrambling so much playing guard they only have to scramble that is a general rule because they have zero control if you have control you're never gonna fight hard against your opponent so first build control build frames and then you're gonna reach your off-balance situations or your front attacks or your side attacks and then be effective playing guard